Yeah, it's a beautiful summer day, and you believe the beach is the place to go. The sun is so bright and the water is so refreshing. But hey, what was that shadow in the water? Ah, it just touched your leg. You spot a beast the size of your first Volkswagen Beetle. It's not even a fish, more like a dragon. You decide to get out of the water immediately. Someone's got to warn everyone else. Guys, get out! There's something huge in the water! As you pack your stuff from the beach, you try to remember everything you know about gigantic fish. You hope they can't jump out of the water and decide to stay and find out what it is. Oh, someone must have called the Coast Guard. They never seem so confused when you saw them on TV. Speaking of TV, there could be like five camera crews arriving. Did someone say earthquake? What could a fish possibly have to do with that? Now they're getting the entire beach evacuated. Well, at least you've parked your car not too far away from there. You turn on the radio in your car. A giant oarfish has been spotted close to the ocean surface today. The entire town is getting evacuated now because the fish of tremors lies deep in the sea and only gets this high up to warn people of upcoming natural disasters. Oh boy, you decide you don't want to be near when that happens. So you start the car and drive away. Soon, though, being far away enough, you stop and Google this fish. So, what makes oarfish leave their comfortable homes half a mile under the sea? Some researchers believe they can feel the electromagnetic changes happening when underwater earthquakes shake the bottom of the ocean. Plus, oarfish, the longest bony fish in the world, are really bad swimmers and can't withstand strong currents. That's probably why they drift to the shore before tsunamis. An ancient Japanese legend has it that giant catfish named Namazu lives somewhere under the islands. When that monster is feeling moody, it moves its tail and the world starts shaking with earthquakes. Oh wow, was that lightning coming from the ground? You've never seen anything like that before. And while you're watching in amazement, your phone buzzes a notification. It's all over the news. Rare earthquake lights have just been spotted in coastal area. Hmm, they don't come out before every earthquake and take different colors and shapes. From short blue sparks to huge forks of light, they look as though some interstellar visitor decided to see how things are down on Earth. They can look like ball lightning that stays up from tens of seconds to minutes. Scientists say all of that is caused by certain rocks, like basalts and gabbros, with strong electrical powers that an earthquake activates. It's like someone switches on a huge battery in the Earth's crust. Quake lights have been spotted all across the world over the centuries, from Italy to San Francisco and Japan. Powerful earthquakes follow them. Somewhere it took just minutes. In other places, it was days. Hold on, was that a deer? Nearly flipped over the car. Whoa, there's a whole herd of them. And all those low-flying birds. They seem so lost and confused. Must be something in the magnetic fields that's messing up the flight. You remember from your biology class that animals and birds can sense earthquakes days in advance. Are those toads? They're hopping uphill from their pond. Must be too risky to stay there at the moment. And hey, cows are all laying down facing in the same direction. They do it for their own safety, not to fall down and break their legs during the quake. Scientists still can't explain what sensors help them know when it's time to leave or fall on the ground. Humans could have made really good use of those. Anyway, that's enough reasons to leave ASAP. But a traffic jam is exactly where you don't want to be at this moment. Looks like everyone is trying to flee to safety. What's that annoying sound? A siren? Oh no, it's like a dozen kids in different cars around are all crying at the same time. It looks like they can also feel the earthquake coming. Scientists believe it must have to do with anxiety that ultra-low-frequency EM waves are producing. Well, you decide to drive around the traffic jam down the coastal highway. Whoa! The water is stepping back way too fast. You can even see the coral reefs uncovered. You think paying a fine is a fair price for your life and accelerate up the hill. The backing tide is a surefire sign of a tsunami. It moves at the speed of a jet plane after an underwater earthquake. The water draws back for a stronger tide to come in. And there it is. A wall of water is coming right in the direction of the beach. Or so it seems. Luckily, the huge wave somehow dwindles getting closer, 
and it's not as horrible when it finally reaches the shore. You sigh with relief, but notice another creepy thing. What are those choppy waters over there? They're forming into channels and taking seaweed and debris. It seems like there's a gap in the wave line. Gears in your head turn feverishly, and you recall these are rip currents. These sinister things can take down even an experienced swimmer. Well, you seem to be safe now, so you pull over to take a breather. And what a view here! You just have to take a picture of that green sky. Oh no, not again! That unusual tint is a mix of red coming from the setting sun and blue light of storm clouds. It means a really tall thundercloud and a tornado or a severe thunderstorm is approaching. Hmm, and what's that smell in the air? When a thunderstorm is on the way, the most distinct and pungent smell your nose picks up is ozone. An electric charge of lightning sets it free from higher altitudes. That other, more pleasant smell of rain is petrichor. Rainwater wakes up molecules on plants, trees, and concrete and asphalt if you're in the city, and their aroma spreads all over the place. Now it seems like that smell has moved from the air right into your mouth. Yeah, looks like a lightning storm is definitely on the way. All those positive ions in the air that lightning bolts set free get mixed with ozone and your saliva, giving you that bitter, metallic taste. Ouch! Your hair is standing on end. And what's that buzz? It's coming from your watch. Too much metal in it. When that happens, invisible positive charges are going through your body. If you can't find shelter immediately, at least stay away from trees and other tall isolated objects. And you gotta keep driving to safety again. Whoa! What was that? You can't see anything. Who's throwing golf balls from the sky? Hail like this is often born in thunderstorms. Raindrops are carried into super cold and high areas of the atmosphere and freeze. To make it possible, the winds have to be really strong, so it often also means a tornado is approaching. And all those cute gold wing warblers. You heard when they suddenly take off and unexpectedly change their route, it could mean a severe tornado is coming. Scientists believe warblers can hear low-frequency infrasound the storms produce. Oh, could this day possibly get any worse? Oh thanks, bees! Just what you like! They seem so excited about something. When they feel like a storm is on the way, they start working even harder and faster to collect more nectar before it hits them. And once they're done, they'll always come back to the hive 10-15 to 15 minutes before heavy rain, even when there are no obvious signs of it coming. Their secret is super-sensitive hairs on the back that can pick up electrostatic buildups from storm clouds. Yay! You're almost home! So good to be back, and are those gorillas in your driveway? Look like they've taken over the place. Is that your couch on the roof? And that T-Rex-shaped cloud doesn't look good either. Red rain? Snowflakes the size of an elephant? At least the treehouse is still there. No, the tornado is taking it apart. And what's that drilling sound? Ah, that's your alarm clock. That was like the weirdest dream ever. At least it's sunny outside in real life. Looks like the beach is the place to go.